Check out this massive platter of fresh birria tacos. Fresh thing. Today, I'm going to show you how to make vegan birria tacos pro maxima. Let's get started. We're going to start by making our birria sauce, which is also known as consomme. Consomme is a thick broth made from a blend of chilies, spices, herbs, and meat. Over here, I have 30, yes, 30 wahio chilies. These chilies have a tangy, sweet, smoky, and fruity flavor. They almost always come with the seeds in, and when you give them a shake, you can hear the seeds rattle. Some of them also come with the stalks, but mine didn't. Anyway, the first thing we're going to have to do is remove the seeds. There are several ways to remove the seeds, but the easiest method I've found is by using a pair of kitchen scissors. Using a pair of kitchen scissors, trim off the bottom end of your chili. Next, we're going to shake off loose seeds, then cut the pepper open using your pair of scissors. Wahio chilies have tough, leathery skins, so a pair of scissors will make it easier. Once you open it up, you'll be greeted with more stuck on seeds. Remove them by hand. Make sure you're wearing a pair of food grade gloves and don't touch your eyes during the process. This is what your chili should look like when you're done. You can set them aside and continue. You can also scrape off the stuck on seeds using a spoon. It's way easier. Don't throw these away, save them. Now let's move on to the second type of chili. These are known as ancho chilies. They are darker and milder than wahio chilies. They also have a thicker leathery skin and they come with their stalks on. If you had a hard time with the wahio chilies, quit now. Like the wahio chilies, we're also going to cut these open using a pair of scissors, then remove the seeds. Ancho chilies have a deep chocolatey raisin and earthy flavor with fruity undertones. They will add a dark rich color to our consomme. Once you're done removing the seeds, your chili ancho should look like this. I'm using 5 chili anchos. Once you're done, you can set them aside. Our next and final chili is called chili de arbol. These are small but mighty. They're way hotter than our wahio and ancho chilies. You only need a few and you don't have to remove the seeds. I like spicy food so I'm using 6. Next, we're going to add all of our chilies to a large bowl. These chilies are dusty and depending on where you get them, they could have insects in them too. So, the best way to take care of that is to wash them thoroughly. I'm going to wash them using cold water. Even though you're washing them thoroughly, you want to be careful so you don't get rid of all of the flavor. While washing your chilies, you notice some color sipping into the water. That's normal. When you're done, you can pour out the water. You don't have to use my combination of chilies. There are other exotic chilies you can use as well. Alright, let's move on to the next step. The next step is to pop all your chilies, just to make them softer. For the amount of chilies I have, I'll be using 4 cups of cold water. Place a large pot on the stove set to high heat, then add your water. Once you've added your water, you can go ahead and add your chilies to the pot. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps the channel. Thank you. Next, we're going to peel a large white onion and cut it in half. Add both onion halves to the pot, cover and bring it to a boil. Once your water comes to a boil, reduce your heat to medium heat and cook for 15 to 20 minutes. Now you can take it off the stove and let it cool down. Alright, let's make a pungent combination of dried spices. In a bowl, you want to add 2 to 3 tablespoons of black peppercorns. Feel free to adjust as needed. Next, you want to add 2 to 3 tablespoons of whole allspice. Follow that with an inch or two of salem cinnamon sticks. Next, we're going to add 5 to 6 dried medium sized bay leaves. Finally, add 4 to 5 whole cloves and we're ready for the next step. We're going to do our best to toast these without burning them. Let's head over to the stove. Place a large pan on a stove set to medium high heat, then add all of your spices. Depending on your heat source, you may need about 1.5 to 2 minutes of toasting. It's very easy to burn these, so you want to keep an eye on them and move them around while toasting. 
this looks good enough for me. Next, we're going to grind everything in a coffee grinder. You want it as fine as you can get it. We'll come back to this later. Going back to our chilies, they've cooled down so we can add them to a powerful blender. Add all of your chilies to a blender and if you want to, you can add your onions as well. It's not typical, but I like it. Some people do and some people don't. But if you want to, you can add one cup of your chili water to the blender. You can adjust as needed and you can also use veggie stock. Add a thumb sized fresh ginger to the blender. We're going to add some fresh garlic. You can add 7 to 10 fresh garlic close to the blender. However many you use is up to you. Next, we're going to add a quarter cup of white vinegar to the blender. If you want to, you can add your herbs as well. Blend on high or until smooth. This is the smoothest my blender could achieve. If your blender is not powerful enough, you can pass your adobo sauce through a strainer. For quicker straining, use a spoon to move it around. This step is optional. Once you're done, your adobo should look like this. Set it aside for now. Let's make our meat replacement. First, we'll be using some king oyster mushrooms for texture. I'm using 5 pounds. Just like in my taco recipe, you want to strip your king oyster mushrooms apart using a fork. You can also use king trumpet mushrooms. Watch my first taco video to learn how to do this. This is a plant-based recipe and it's also for those who for one reason or the other don't eat meat or animal products. For some umami flavor, I'll be adding 5 large portobello mushrooms. Slice your mushrooms into thick slices and set them aside. Oyster mushrooms are our third and final mushrooms. I'm adding oyster mushrooms for some flavor and also to complement the meaty texture of king oyster mushrooms. Pluck off the petals and set them aside. Over here, I have 4 large plum tomatoes. Some people blend them, but I don't. There are several ways you can incorporate them into this dish. My preferred method is to slice them into large slices. Slice and set them aside. I finally found the best way to cook king oyster mushrooms. I got this idea last year and I'm just trying it. Add about a quarter cup of avocado oil to a pressure cooker. When it comes to cooking king oyster mushrooms, a pressure cooker is king. Chop some onions, then set your pressure cooker to saute. Add your onions and saute until translucent. Next, we're going to add all of the spices we toasted and ground earlier. Add 2 to 4 tablespoons of Mexican oregano, then we're going to add 2 tablespoons of dried thyme. Add 4 to 5 tablespoons of coconut aminos. Add 2 tablespoons of ground cumin. Next, we're going to add 3 tablespoons of ground coriander seeds. Give it a good mix, then let your herbs bloom for 1 minute. Add your tomato slices, then add some sea salt to taste. Give it a good mix and let it cook until your timer goes off. Once your timer goes off, go ahead and add your pulled king oyster mushrooms. I'm so happy I came up with this method and it worked. Give it a good mix, then add your oyster mushroom petals. Next, add your umami powerhouse, your portobello mushrooms. Add 4 to 5 cups of your adobo sauce. Rinse out your bowl with 1 cup of water and add it. We've added a lot of liquid, so we need to adjust our salt. Once you're done, put on the lid and seal it shut. Also, seal the steam release valve, then press the meat or stew button. You can add more time if you wish. Once it's done, carefully release the steam and let it sit for an hour. 
after one hour of sitting, you should get something like this. Check this out. It looks and tastes amazing. We're not done yet. Remove and add all of your mushrooms to a separate bowl. You can also use a strainer, but you need to be careful. The mushrooms have absorbed a lot of flavor from the sauce, but it's not enough. We still need to lock it in. Pour the rest of your sauce into a large bowl. This has gone from a regular adobo sauce to now what we call consomme. Beautiful. We'll come back to this. Now let me show you how to lock in the flavors in your mushrooms. Add your mushrooms to a cast iron skillet set to high heat. We're going to cook until the sauce thickens. Once your sauce is almost dried up, you can sear your mushrooms and you get something like this. Of course, this step is optional. Alright, let's make our birria tacos. I'm going to start by moving my consomme and other ingredients closer to the stove. You're going to need some shredded vegan mozzarella cheese. We're also going to slice a whole white onion and take it to the back. Move your mushrooms to the back, then chop some fresh coriander or cilantro. There's no measurement for all of these ingredients. You can use as much as you want. Let's talk tortillas. For my tortillas, I'm using both corn and flour tortillas. If you're not using a nonstick pan, adding some oil to a cast iron pan will make it easier. Grab a corn or flour tortilla and drag it over the surface of your consomme. Repeat the process on the other side. Your pan should be on medium heat and once your oil is hot, you can place in your tortilla. Let it cook for about one minute. After one minute, carefully give it a flip. Add a generous amount of cheese over the top of your tortilla. Next, add a generous amount of mushrooms over the top of your cheese. Immediately follow that with some chopped onions. Finally, add some chopped coriander. Now we're going to envelope everything into the tortilla by folding it in half. Make sure you use a spatula and be careful. Once folded, we're going to let it cook for 30 seconds. You can press it down occasionally to get some charring. After 30 seconds, flip and repeat the process, then you're done. Remove and repeat the process for as many times as you need. smoke your tacos if you want them to smell like actual street food. This is the same smoker I used in my burger recipe. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Of course this step is optional but it's highly advised. I smoked it for 10 minutes using apple wood. Here you go. Serve your consomme in a bowl then add some chopped onions and some fresh coriander. I could bathe in this. Take a look at this beautiful vegan birria taco. Let me know how much you pay for this in the comment section below. Don't forget to add some key lime juice before you devour this. When you're done, dunk it into the consomme like there's no tomorrow. Then take the biggest bite of your life. It should be touching the back of your throat. Here, take a bite. Psych! Think I should rub this in your face some more. Yes, that's what you get for not making my recipes. Just kidding. These are smoky, crunchy, crispy, flavorful, and delicious. I'll see you all next week. Oh, and don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. Thank you.